Do you think during the State of the Union he had any medication in him that <laughs> so, was allowing him to be a little bit more excited or a yeah, it? I love the uh, the the excited terminology. <laughs> so I recently interviewed uh, Dr. Harry Siegel and I asked him about this specifically. You know, we talked about Trump and Biden cognitive state. And Who's Harry Siegel? He's a uh, professor of psychology and psychiatry at Cornell and the Cor- I'm not going to get the name exactly right. Cornell Wild Department of Psychiatry or something along those lines. Okay. My question to him was, because if you turned on Fox that night, Hannity was saying, you know, he's jacked up. And then the next day it was he's on drugs. He's on some type of drug. And I, I couldn't help but laugh because my very, you know, my dad's a psychiatrist, but I'm no expert in in drugs of this kind. So I went to people who know more about this stuff. But my instinct was, I don't know that there's anything that will hide cognitive decline in the way that was being alleged. So I asked Dr. Harry Siegel about it and informally some other people. They, th- their impression was in terms of energy. You're basically talking about caffeine, Mm -hmm. right? And lots of people would have a cup of coffee or two before a big speech. That's not going to hide the cognitive decline. You know, he doesn't know what day it is. You drink coffee. Now you know what day it is. But what about like ADHD medication? So let me me get to that. Yeah. So then I said to Dr. Siegel, what about ADHD medication? (laughs) Is there is there something like that? And he said that ADHD medication. So first of all, we have no reason to believe Joe Biden has ADHD. So then what we're talking about is a sort of off label or almost recreational type use of those medications. And he said there's no evidence in the literature he's familiar with that if you're suffering from the sort of cognitive decline that some are alleging that that would actually help you. So I don't I'm not an expert in this. Right. So I had to go and ask people what I was told by people who know about this stuff is Other than just getting some energy from caffeine, which so many people do, uh, there's really not a drug that would mask the sort of cognitive decline that some are attributing to Now, what do you say to all the people who say, but no, that's just because they're hiding it. And there's these elite level drugs that only people in the upper echelon of society have access to. And it's it's something that you don't know about. What do you say to those people? Well, then it's also something they don't know about. And then so what are we really talking about? We're now we're now we're talking about feelings and not facts. I would say you can feel whatever you want. You can feel that there's drugs we don't know about that work in ways that we don't we the public has not been notified about and doctors seem to know nothing about. We're kind of operating in the how do I know there's not an invisible tiger on the table right now between us? I I don't know. The thing that I guess I've had a realization recently of is that you can find data to really support anything. And I feel like this was confirmed recently with Elon Musk's interview with Don Lemon, and we'll get onto this later in this podcast. But they had a very contentious section of their debate. I should call it a debate more than an interview uh, where Elon was just like, well, where are you getting this data from? Don says like, well, there's plenty of different sources. Okay, well, what are the sources? And I can find data that actually goes one-to-one against the data that you're citing. And I think like, I'm sure that we could find plenty of different psychologists and professors and this and that experts that would say he probably was on something, which doesn't necessarily like completely, obviously deny whatever claim that you just made. But I think that it's, it's a, it's a really challenging path to go down to try to figure out whether or not he he is using. I uh, so I disagree with you in a couple different ways. I think it is it's generally true. So Sam Harris talks about um, the setting of small fires that can be hard to put out. And this the analogy is, you know, let's say there's a debate about climate change or whatever. And um, you can sort of prepare for most of the known arguments that a, a climate science denier might present. But then you get to a table like this and they say, well, but did you see that small study from the Philippines? And then what about the Liberian whatever study? And if you don't know about it, all of a sudden there's been a number of small fires set that you can't necessarily put out because you're not mm-hmm. familiar with them. And as we know, those sorts of debates are more about who's more articulate or can sort of score these emotional points rather than about who's necessarily correct. I I think with the example you're bringing up of we can also find psychologists or psychiatrists that would say whatever. I have no doubt that you could find mental health professionals that would have a different opinion about Trump Biden on cognitive decline. But we either have studies that tell us here's what sort of drug could work in that way or we don't. And while you could definitely find opinions I have no reason to believe that there would be specific drugs that some psychiatrist could come up with and say, here's the drug that if you gave it to Joe Biden, his serious cognitive decline would evaporate for 90 minutes during a speech. I just don't think that exists. If it does, I would say, let's find it. Let's cite it. 